welcome to this webcast uh, today we are looking at a product by name solidors flow simulation especially the specialized module on electronic components and uh, uh, electronic thermal cooling so today we are seeing how it can help to overcome thermal challenges in the electronics industry uh, before we start to introduce myself i am kapil kapil gaitonde i am the technical manager uh, based out here in uh, singapore and covering all the south asian countries and australia uh, for uh, simulation products so let's uh, um, uh, 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 any any issues on screen sharing let me check yes uh -huh. uh, okay i guess i had not shared my screen now it looks okay so here it is um, okay this was just the introduction slide um, let's move on so let me get my next slide okay so first let's have a look at the challenges that uh, this particular industry faces uh, if i take a, a typical um, typical electronic uh, enclosure which can be like an uh, um, like a cpu kind of thing wherein it has multiple chips uh, capacitors fans etc uh, pcbs as well uh, one of the basic things which uh, a designer of such a equipment wants to design is how the air would flow inside this component or enclosure now this air can be either through forced convection or as well through natural convection and even though we have been discussing about internal uh, flow here it can be cases of uh, external flow as well it can be cases of external flow as well wherein <clears throat> typically uh, it could be natural wind flows which is taking away the heat from these uh, uh, electronic equipments <clears throat> okay well, the next challenge which i would like to highlight is more on thermal design now here again it could be a typical pcb board which is having multiple chips uh, capacitors or even heat sinks etc and you want to uh, see how the heat is dissipated through either conduction or a little bit of air flow around it so again this could be one of the basic understandings that one want to have uh, he wants to design where to locate the capacitors the piece, uh, the chips um, or other electronic components on the particular pcb board uh, it could be more intricate components like a heat sink uh, he, if i believe most of you may be aware a typical heat sink is an efficient uh, heat dis dissipating uh, component which one might use on a electronic pcb board uh, he wants to design what would be the best location to have it uh, what what would be the best location from where to extract the heat such that uh, uh, it can cool down up to your requirement uh, and finally it could be uh, a forced convection wherein i want to decide the fan details i want to decide uh, what kind of fan to have what should be the location of the fan um, as well as um, what should be the outlet from the fans is that the air which goes out takes in takes out maximum amount of heat from the system uh, frankly these are not all the challenges but a few of the challenges which i could think and have listed down here uh, and today we'll see how flow simulation can help you address these challenges so first of all the module that we are looking at is something called as uh, electronic cooling system it is called as a electronic cooling system module it is a industry specific module for for electronic uh, electronics industry um, it is dedicated for such kind of fluid flows thermal management inside uh, electronic equipments um, so typically this this comes with uh, the basic module uh, that we are looking at what is called as solidors flow simulation so as we discuss now typically this is more of liquids airs uh, the liquid would be air and we want to simulate uh, this particular liquid so obviously uh, fluid rather so this uh, so for the simulation of this this kind of uh, uh, fluid we are using this module by name uh, solidors flow simulation 
as well uh, any such condition required something called as conjugate heat transfer wherein the heat is transferred from a solid component to a uh, to a liquid uh, entity so these two is a basic uh, capability of any cft software and that is what would come with solidus flow simulation however uh, this this module also comes up with this add on thing which is called as electronic cooling module wherein uh, we have a huge set of components one of them could be the requirement of a chip we represent them using something called as a two resistor component compact model so over here we have a list of uh, commercially available chips um, as per jedc standard and we can directly uh, drag and drop these into the simulation so we need not model these chips in entire detail typically we have a solid component and we are just representing this solid component with with uh, these chips there on as i said one of the interesting uh, entities would be heat pipes uh, which are typically used for extracting heat from from certain uh, hot components inside a electronic system it could be as simple as the chips um, so again there are ready made um, or ready made of entities or uh, templates available by which you can easily simulate these things there on pcb generators typically many pcbs are there you want to specify the number of layers number of uh, uh, or the amount of aluminum uh, or silver inside it and want to ensure or simulate the heat generated those as well can be done here finally one of the important things joule heating so typically as we know whenever current flows through a conductor it will create heat and we want to simulate how much heat or uh, which location it is getting uh, created sometimes this heat is necessary if at all it is a heater itself however most of the times this will become a problem and we, we want to dissipate this particular heat so all this come through an engineering database uh, in the software by which you can directly drag and drop these things and use it in the software so most of these things need not be modeled you can have junk geometries junk square geometries and those can be represented using these particular components by the way if any questions please feel free to use the chat window i will take the questions at the end of the webinar now most important thing uh, as per what you have been seeing in all my webinars um, all these uh, things that we saw as of now excuse me i skip Mm -hmm. let me get to the right slide yeah here it is so all these features that we saw especially in flow simulation solid or simulation and plastics they have been all designed in the product in such a way that a designer himself can do the simulation so we are looking at a parallel processing environment by which uh, we would save time on the overall design of a product and in effect that should save the entire Uh, or reduce the entire cycle time of designing a product so that is one of the basic themes on which this entire software has been uh, designed so it is very uh, user friendly and integrated into the designer front end so let me get into the software uh, that would be the most interesting part of this so here it is uh, a a cpu kind of thing as i mentioned you can see it has multiple uh, multiple uh, chips down here it has a few capacitors heat sinks and the uh, these are the few fan kind of components down here and the green one is the pcb so if i take you through the configurations down here so maybe this is the default configuration you can see which is as which is what the designer has created you can see it has a few holes down here a few more components than uh, then i am going to use for flow simulation so this is how it looks there on we'll see a configuration which is which is more stripped down for simulation so you can see we have got rid of the holes down here however they will be simulated we'll see how how we are going to simulate it um then we have the pcb and uh, rather a few small components have been removed otherwise most of the setup is as it is we have one more configuration down here wherein the fans if you see the previous configuration we had a few fans down here those have been removed and we are actually representing those fans at the inlet itself that is somewhere on the uh, body of the enclosure 
and finally we have one more iteration so keep a tab on this particular heat sink one more uh, configuration wherein i am changing the kind of heat sink that has been used in this particular setup so these are a few different configurations that are present in this solidus assembly or the designer is thinking of and using flow simulation he will understand what is the kind of temperature a particular important chip in this entire setup will reach so obviously his target would be to ensure that the temperature on a particular chip does not cross a certain value or is limited around that so here it is uh, let uh, i'm getting into a particular configuration but before that typically in solidox uh, add-ins you can activate solidox flow simulation there on you get into flow simulation and finally you start a wizard <clears throat> by the way quick one uh, you may be one of the first uh, users who is seeing the 2017 version live so you can see i'm using the most recent version of solidus which is released just a few days back it is in beta stage <clears throat> in another month or two uh, we should have the release but those who are interested in the beta version can always download and try it but this is how the new version of solidus would look coming back to flow simulation um, so here it is you start off with the wizard you create a few few initial things like giving the name selecting the configuration you can select the units that you are going to use you can select if at all temperatures are involved gravity needs to be simulated etc those details uh, you can select the fluid that is involved i am selecting air down here because this is thermal we need to also select the material that is present in in this uh, setup i am taking a particular material and i keep going with this so these are a few initial uh, things that we cre um, tell the software or create in the software to to establish the base for this particular simulation once this is done we get into the module so you saw in the initial settings we gave a particular material for solid that was only for uh, at the global level and by default the software will assume that all these parts are made up of that particular material however we know we want to apply different materials for different parts so one of them is this one aluminium so typically i can directly get into one of these select the parts which you want to give a, give a particular material go to the database or you can as well create a user defined uh, data material and that can be applied to any particular component in here so using this method ensure that all the solid parts down here are having a particular uh, metallic or plastic material uh, defined to them there on uh, the fluid is already already defined in the global thing which is air and now we need to define a few a few boundary conditions for liquids so typically in this case uh, we are looking at environmental pressures so there is a certain holes at the inlet and outlet all these have been maintained at an environment pressure okay uh, somewhere down here also and secondly there are a few inlets and outlets at the top and bottom those again have been uh, have been maintained at environmental pressure uh, i would like to highlight um, typically this is a internal flow analysis so as a part of modeling we ensure that a setup is created wherein uh, it is a closed volume so there is no leakage no area where fluid can actually go out of this system so that is the way this particular uh, enclosure is created so here it is uh, environmental pressures there on uh, one of the interesting and useful entities which is fans so you can see here solidworks is offering a few different kind of fans down here at this point of time we are using a so called internal fan wherein uh, you can see these i would say these junk components will be represented as internal fans so we can select them there on i can uh, specify the details of this fan wherein i tell the software which surface is working as the fan outlet which surface is working as the inlet so you can say there is no physical fan over here however the effect of the fan is created using using this particular uh, i would say mathematical model and you can see we have a list of uh, different fans down here we can select the appropriate fan um, from this particular database if i get into editing this you can see we have these different fans let me get into one of it we define the flow rate 
typically the uh, fan curve has to be given either um, most of the fan curves for the commercially available fans are available here if not one can also create his own custom fan curve over here so let me close this so as i told you this is one of the important entities that we create the fan there are obviously the heat sources we have multiple components down here which are creating heat so we can select them appropriately over here and give the amount of heat that they are creating so the heat creation can be either through vats or it could be a static temperature that we say or temperature that the part will be maintaining and yeah this could be the few different ways let me show you this so here it is so it can be either heat generation rate it could be volumetric heat generation rate or a temperature so we can apply one of these values to the appropriate components which are generating the heat there on as a, as you remember initially as per design uh, at the inlet and outlet there were certain holes now obviously we can either have those holes as it is which might create a larger solution time and a better mesh requirement if not we can use something called as a perforated plate option within the software that is what has been used here using this i can define uh, a certain uh, area or a solid entity to be working as a perforated plate and we can tell the software on what kind of perforated plate it is in terms of the diameter of the holes and the free area ratio also. and of course these the shape of these uh, holes can change it can be round rectangular polygon or complex okay so this is how it is we can define such holes or other entities through perforated plates now let's move on to the next component which is the chip so obviously this is one of the most important component in a electronic uh, pcb board uh, again as i so mentioned let me better open the database here it is so you can see here we have something called as two resistor components a few predefined ones and there is a list of those different components down here <coughs> as per uh, jdx standards and uh, here it is so we can specify a few important parameters as per those defined um, or rather these are defined in the software if at all you want you can create your own uh, own parameters for these details what is required for these chips number one the the face from where the top face from where it is exposed to the atmosphere or air down here and the other two faces which are inside the uh, inside the chip frankly this is a bit of uh, mathematical representation of the actual chip uh there is a bit of explanation on on how this has been uh, defined obviously it will take a bit of time for me at the moment i would restrict myself saying that we have this particular component and which can be used to represent uh chips yeah, one can obviously go into more details through our help on on how exactly this particular component works of course we are defining the uh overall heat or the heat capacity of this particular uh, chip or the heat generation rate so this is the way we are representing the chips there on we have the pcbs so most of another important components the pcb bolts so i'll get into that so you can see here pcb bolts we are representing it using the surfaces and if i get into the details so typically you can see here we are specifying the uh, densities we are specifying the thicknesses of the different layers and uh, and how how they are going to affect uh, so as i mentioned we can specify the percentage of conducting layer and the percentage of uh, non conducting layer down here so again uh, there is a bit of discussion involved on what how it is getting converted what is a pcb and all the all, all those details but in this short time i cannot do it uh, so but i would like to highlight this is the way uh, it is being represented <clears throat> finally obviously um, the software has its own ways of converging this setup however we ourselves can give control on uh, on certain values and parameters which are important for us and uh, those can be set up using goals we can ensure they are converged up uh, up to our expectations and that level as well as we can monitor them on on the values as well as convergence so here you can see most of them most of these are actually the different uh, heat generating components we are keeping a tab on that 
we are keeping a tab on volume flow rates at the inlets and the outlets and the overall temperature of the system so that uh, we we know uh, the right convergence happens meshing is done if at all you want you can go in for a refined mesh but frankly this is what uh, the setup is all about uh, definitely a lot of things to discuss but if i had to quickly uh, say a few things this is what it was now let's get into the results um, uh, i think let me start off with the flow trajectory because that is the one which will show you how the air is uh, how the air is moving inside the system so first basic uh, result without much uh, much seeing the values etc so this is how it is so there is a internal fan down here it is pushing the air i would say it is pushing the air inside the system certain air goes out of it it certain air is recirculating down here obviously most important would be it takes the heat from the chip through the um, heat sink here and it takes it out of the system so this could be one of the results that you are seeing obviously more important would be the values and let me hide this result and let me go into a cut plot you can see here let me reset the values to the local minimum and maximum and uh, if i take a standard view the temperatures would look something or the temperature distribution would look something like this obviously uh, at a certain location it especially at the chip cross section it may be more and uh, as you go away from it it you can see here somewhere around cross these chips you should be able to see a higher temperature down here right somewhere because there are multiple of them so this is i'm not getting into specifics of values but uh, this this could be one of the important results that one want to see uh, now let me get into the other configuration uh, the one which had an external fan so in this case we don't have a internal fan the fans are directly sitting on the uh, on the on the one of the sides down here so here it is let me again show you the flow trajectory so here you can see there is more uh, space down here at the uh, beginning for air to move in looks like a more smooth flow than before we have saved some space inside by having a fan at a different location definitely certain amount of recirculation is happening which is not desirable but this could be one of the uh, uh, i would say inferences that one can have from such a setup let me have a look at a cut plot again we can see the temperatures in a certain way rather uh, it appears this to be better but unfortunately the temperature over here look to be a bit more than the ones that we saw before so looks like this is a less efficient system wherein uh, uh, the temperatures are actually um, okay ex other way around they look more but actually in terms of values they are not more however i am not discussing much on the details of those values let me skip it for this moment now the final one you saw the heat sink is getting changed here we have one more iteration wherein heat sink is changed let me get into the flow trajectories again uh, it would look almost similar because this would not create but of course there is more free movement of air through the heat sink here right and of course finally the cut plot yeah this is how it looks of course i missed out on a important result which is more towards the goals which we are discussing so for us the most important thing would be the uh, temperature of the chip you can see here it has moved up from 290 degrees celsius it has gone up to a level of 360 of course this is all very high and then it has stabilized and obviously we want to understand at what temperatures or what what would be the maximum value it reaches and it stabilizes uh, that will tell us uh, how this system is working and uh, what improvements i want to do on the system so once it reaches this temperature uh, i believe the or other way around because of the fans and the entire system the chip is not crossing this particular maximum temperature so this is it um, that i would like to highlight today um, uh, so in conclusion so we saw how flow simulation can help in uh, in managing these uh, heating effects from thermal components in a effective way 
so this is what it was um uh or this is what i wanted to share on on today 